Blessed be the one holy and living God. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray together the Collect of the Day, found in your worship bulletin insert. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us pray responsively, Psalm 77, found in your worship bulletin. I shall cry aloud to God. 
I will cry aloud, and he will hear me. In the trouble, I sought the Lord. My hands were stretched out by night and did not tire. I refused to be comforted. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. By your strength, you have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and trembled. The very depths were shaken. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind, your lightnings lit up the world, <clears throat> earth trembled and shook. Your, ways, your way was in the sea, and your paths in the great waters, yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? He turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. King of kings, with thy living fire of judgment, purge this land of bitter things. Solace all its wide dominion with the healing of thy wings. Amen. Amen. My name's Jim Curry. I'm retired Bishop Suffragan in the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. And it is just wonderful to be back here with you at Christ Church. I'll speak more of that in just a few minutes. I'm here to preach good news. Really, really good news. But I'm not going to do that without first speaking the truth of the reality of our society at this point. Easy access to unlocked guns and ammunition continues to be a major factor in suicides. 61% of suicides are, I'm sorry, 61% of all deaths by gun are death by suicide. In Connecticut last year, that meant 127 suicides by gun. And it, guns' easy access also lead to the death and permanent injury of children. Just last week, a toddler in Waterbury was shot in the stomach by somebody showing off a gun in his home. Easy access to guns increases domestic violence in this state, and it also makes neighborhood arguments fatal. This last week in Hartford, two people were killed and another wounded over an argument about a dog. Something is basically wrong. Guns in the hands of people who should not have guns are major factors in domestic violence, in street violence, and in homicides. We've seen it this last month in two horrific mass shootings, one at a grocery store in Buffalo, the other at an elementary school in southern Texas, in Uvalde. 
In both cases, the young man who was the perpetrator of the carnage was able to get a semi-automatic rifle. Guilford has not been spared of this kind of violence. No community in this nation has been spared from this experience. We know it all too well. Women in this country are 28 times more likely to be killed by a gun than any other highly developed country. These statistics are just horrible. It's part of what we're asking God to do. Intervene here and give us the healing that God wants to give us. This isn't a new issue. 2,700 years ago, the prophet Isaiah, speaking to a country in the midst of great violence, uncertainty, and fear, spoke the words of God to those people. He said, God will be judge here, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not raise up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Isaiah preached that message to the weary people around him. It seemed like an impossible dream, but among some people, it took hold. And they started to think in the depths of their faith that this is indeed God speaking to us. This is God's promise. Lawyers tell me that the word shall has a determinative reality to it. It's not like will, but shall happen. They shall beat their swords into plowshares. See, our God is a God of healing and a God of hope who leads us through death and despair into resurrection, into new life. Our God seeks reconciliation and wholeness for all people. Our God embraces us for the long term. That's the core of our faith, even when we can't see the end of the promise. It's the faith that was proclaimed by the prophets, by the apostles, and it was sealed in the life of Jesus Christ. And Jesus now calls us to lives of service and creative endeavors to end violence and to bring peace to our communities, our neighborhoods, our society, and spread it out to the world. You and I live lives that are full of choices. This last week, the Supreme Court said we have the right to carry concealed weapons. We also have the right not to do that. And we can stand up with our choices about how we're going to act, what we're going to teach, and what we're going to show the world. So I want to give today a new translation to Isaiah. And it goes this way. They shall beat their guns into garden tools. This is Jennifer's garden tool. It's made out of a shotgun barrel, and she's been using it. It works. It's an instrument of nurture. They shall beat their guns into garden tools. Neighbor shall not raise up gun against neighbor. Neither shall they learn violence 
anymore. Now, you and I know that we're not there yet. But God's promise still holds true. And we are invited to bring this message in the words we say, in the prayers we pray, and in the actions we do. This is a message of hope that this world needs to hear. Somebody said to me a few weeks ago, well, what you're doing is just performative nonsense. Well, the world hasn't changed, that's true. But our job is to raise up the alternative. And I've learned from some masters. In 2006, I had the opportunity to visit the Anglican Church in Mozambique and their bishop, Denise Shangulani, who's a man of steadfast faith, the faith of Isaiah, and a deeply committed follower of Jesus. Mozambique is in southeastern Africa, and it had been through a long civil war and more, almost every institution of society had been destroyed. The country was awash with guns. Now, they didn't manufacture guns there, so all these guns had come in from the outside. They were hidden in homes and buried in gardens. But Bishop Sengalani said, he had worked for peace for years, and finally a ceasefire happened, and he said, we have to get rid of the guns. They're too much of a threat to us. So he invited people to bring in their guns, and he invited all the Christian leaders of the country to join him in this. And so they had a time when people brought in guns. They were destroyed right then and something of value for their new lives was given to them. It might be building material. It might have been hoes and rakes for their subsistence farms. It might have been a pedal sewing machine because there was no electricity. It might have been a bicycle. But over time, over time, a million guns were brought in, destroyed, and people were given something of value to face their future. Those guns came in, they were destroyed, and Bishop Sengalani said to the people, that's not enough. So he invited artists in Mozambique to take the destroyed weapons and start to make symbols of hope and peace and love to put out publicly. A group of artists made the Tree of Life. It's right here. I hope you have a chance to see it more closely. It's about 14 feet tall. It's welded together. It's pieces of guns. You can see them in the picture. And it comes up, and then the branches come out. Those are the barrels of AK-47s. And then the leaves are there. They're the magazines of AK-47s. And the artists put this sculpture in the middle of the capital city of Mozambique, and they invited people to come forward and make a pledge. I will not be part of civil war again. And after the tree was there for a long time, the people of Mozambique decided that that message needed to go much further than their country. So they gave this tree of life to the British Museum, and it's there to this day in their permanent Africa collection. So the next time you're in London, go see it. It's worth it. Now, the tree of life has its own story. It comes from the book of Revelation. The river comes through the New Jerusalem, and on the edge of the river is the tree of life. Its roots go deep. It comes up. It has fruit for every season. And the leaves, the leaves of the tree, are for the healing of the nations. It 
It's not symbolic nonsense. It's the core of our faith that God will take the worst we can do to one another and will, in love, break it apart and reform it and give us a sense of what God's vision is for humanity. So I want to give a shout out now to a whole bunch of people. The, the end of the gospel today talks about uh, those people who turn away from the plow and don't go forward. Notice the word plow here. Well, I want to talk just about a few people. There are too many in this parish to, to give recognition to everybody, but, except that I want to do that first. Christ Church was one of three churches here in South Central Connecticut, along with St. James New Haven and with Grace and St. Peter's in Hamden, that helped start Swords to Plowshares. We had a discussion here and in those other three parishes about seeking money to be able to buy a forge and some anvils and start doing the work of beating guns into garden tools. A lot of people here were at that in the beginning. Certainly Harrison was, Marianne was, a whole lot of you. And then from there, we started doing the work. And today you're going to see some of the product of that, uh, especially in the necklaces that Pat Downick and Maricha, Maricha's last name is? I didn't quite hear that. Thank you. Tansy. Um, they've made beautiful necklaces using their jewelry skill. There are a couple other people I want to shout out to today. One of my partners, a co-founder of Swords to Plowshares Northeast, is Pina Violano. Pina, stand up, stand up. Pina has been working for years and years and years on injury prevention and especially to get guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them and who don't want them. That's what buybacks are about. We invite people to bring in guns that are unsafely stored or just forgotten about in attics and in basements, and they are tremendously dangerous. But Pina's been working on that 20 years, maybe, in, in that kind of work. She's now a professor at Quinnipiac University and, and working with nursing students and and community outreach. Uh, she's also part of a national group called I Injury Prevention. And partly because of her work there, yesterday in Harlem, New York City, there was a gun buyback sponsored by Columbia Presbyterian. Is that where it was? Louder. Oh, the Attorney General. Uh, but it's only because of people like Pina who have taken the plow and gone forward that that kind of work is happening. Another partner of mine is here, John Saratelli. John is a volunteer from Grace and St. Peter's Hamden. Every week, he comes and works at the forge. Uh, this weekend, he's already been at two other events at the forge, Friday night and all day yesterday, and he's our expert in making the handles for this tool. And we have another tool. This, we're going to be working on all of these today. So this, we've finally gotten to the incredible good news. God has given us the choice to work. To work at the forge, and you are all invited to come and beat guns today at the forge. 
God has given us the choice to tell the story that God's promises hold true. God has given us the challenge to step up against the forces of violence in our society and say it does not have to be this way. There's another way to do it. And we want to show you one way. Buybacks, swords to plowshares, they're just one teeny, teeny part of what we need to do or can do about the issues of gun violence in this country. There are wonderful people all over the place who are thinking creatively and with innovation about how do we get the message across that we're meant to live in a society in which there is not fear about being shot by someone else. You know, we talk a lot about the number of people who are killed. It's about 40,000 a year. But the number of people who are wounded by guns is four times that many. And they're wounded and scarred for life. We have the opportunity to be people of a promise, people of new life, that says, together, and over time, we can change the way we live. That's what we're about. That's all we're about. And it's my invitation for you to join us today. We're right outside in the driveway. Uh, see what we're doing, join us, um, and um, pray for us as you have already prayed for us. Um, we're starting to make a difference. I get a call now every single day. Another church, another community center, another senior center wants us to come and share this story. One little group at a time. I gotta tell you, I love it. Uh, and I'll do it until I can't do it anymore. Uh, but you get to be part of it today. Last thing, because. This, this, this was a gift to me last year as I was working with a summer camp, uh, interfaith summer camp in uh, Hartford. And the kids were, co were coming to the forge. And one of the leaders gave me this icon. Again, I'm going to put it up here so you can see it. You probably can't see it there. But this is Jesus at the forge pounding a sword into a plowshare. Uh, it was Isaiah's promise, and Jesus is bringing it into fruition for us. Amen. Amen. Turning then to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, I invite you to stand as you're able as we claim the faith that's been so wonderfully proclaimed among us, using the form of the Nicene Creed that begins on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.
Please join me in this morning's prayers of the people, a litany for gun violence prevention. Giver of life and love, you created all people as one family and called us to live together in harmony and peace. Surround us with your love as we face the challenges and tragedies of gun violence. For our dear ones, for our neighbors, for strangers and those known to you alone, loving God, make us instruments of your peace. God of righteousness, you have given our leaders, especially Joseph, our president, the members of Congress, the judges of our courts and members of our legislatures, power and responsibility to protect us and to uphold our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For all who bear such responsibility, for all who struggle to discern what is right in the face of powerful political forces loving God, make us instruments of your peace. God of compassion, we give you thanks for first responders, for police officers, firefighters and EMTs, and all those whose duties bring them to the streets, the lobbies, the malls, the houses of worship, and the homes where the carnage of gun violence takes place day after day. Give them courage and sound judgment in the heat of the moment and grant them compassion for the victims. For our sis brothers and sisters who risk their lives and their serenity as they rush to our aid, loving God, make us instruments of your peace. Merciful God, bind up the wounds of all who suffer from gun violence, those maimed and disfigured, those left alone and grieving, and those who struggle to get through one more day. Bless them with your presence and help them find hope. For all whose lives are forever marked by the scourge of gun violence, loving God, make us instruments of your peace. God who remembers, may we not forget those who have died in the gun violence that our society has allowed to become routine. Receive them into your heart and comfort us with your promise of eternal love and care. For all who have died, including those on our hearts, bewail those who die today and those who will die tomorrow, loving God. Make us instruments of your peace. God of justice, help us, your church, find our voice, empower us to change this broken world and to bewail the needless deaths caused by gun violence. Give us power to rise above our fear that nothing can be done and grant us the conviction to advocate for change for your dream of love and harmony. Loving God, Make us instruments of your peace. God of mercy, we also lift up before you all those commended to the prayers of the parish, including Bill, Jean and Jane, Paul, Kate, Bill and family, Maxim, little Fiona, and those on your hearts. All this we pray in the name of the one who offered his life so that we might live Jesus the Christ, amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins and our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and all power.
Please be seated. Well, Bishop Curry, it's so grand. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I remember in May 12 years ago when you were here, uh, uh, when we celebrated a, a new ministry um, that was beginning then with me and, and the dear people of this place. And, <coughs> and uh, well, I'm so glad that you could be here today. And so I hope you all are going to take Bishop's invitation seriously and, and uh, come out in the driveway after the service and um, have a crack at the anvil. There is nothing more satisfying than, than um, taking a, a, a striking a blow for nonviolence <laughs> and uh, a, a constructive blow for nonviolence. So, um, Thank you for bringing that message and, and for all that you have inspired among so many of us um, that we could have this uh, celebration and this observance today. Um, I just want to uh, note a couple other things. Um, 
about things that are happening in the life of, of the parish uh, that, uh, oh, including our uh, celebration of the Holy Eucharist, uh, communion, um, everybody's welcome. Um, we receive uh, the wafer in an open palm and, and uh, Bishop Curry will be standing here at the foot of the, of the chancel steps to uh, share the, the bread, the, the wafer, in the form of wafer. And then one of us will be by the piano and another will be over here. If uh, you wish to uh, take a sip or otherwise from the chalice of, of the consecrated wine, that's where to go. If you'd like to receive uh, a, a sip of the wine from a, an individual communion cup, um, then come to this side. Um, and that's what we'll be doing at, uh, for the administration of, of communion. So glad so many are here today. And, um, I, you know, it's, um, we had our uh, high school graduation on the green here on Wednesday, and families were fleeing um, town. And so uh, right after that, I got so many notes saying, oh, darn, you know, we're going to be someplace else. So I'm glad you all are, he are here today. Um, we'll have uh, the, our Wednesday evening, Order for Evening. It's Saints Peter and Paul. Uh, it's online, or, or you can come and be with us for that. That will be the wrap-up of that for the summer. Um, and then uh, next week, uh, we'll begin four Sundays. Uh, where I probably won't be here. I know I'm not going to be with you for, for uh, three of the next four Sundays. And, uh, 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 and Marianne will be with you the next two. And thank you, Marianne, for that. So you'll be in, in, uh, looked after well. Um, about um, birthdays and anniversaries, are there any to celebrate today? You have an announcement? Okay, Marianne, go ahead. Yeah, you, you use your best outside voice. Great, thank you, Marianne. Well, I happen to know of two birthdays. Uh, it's uh, Bob Cairns and Winnie Seibert are both celebrating birthdays tomorrow, so um, let us pray for them. Watch over your servants Winnie and Bob, O oh Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear hearts, we have been richly blessed in the life of the kingdom. Let us with gladness present the alms and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
Lord Jesus, I cannot now worship you at the altar of the church in the sacrament of your body and blood, yet in spirit I would join myself with all those who in your holy church offer you the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Visit me, I pray, with your mercy, pardon, and blessing, and fill me with faith and love and repentance, and so strengthen and sustain me by your grace that I may with pure heart and mind follow you, the only God, now and forever. Amen.
knoweth, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.